So the driving goal behind all of the work we do in our West Dallas, West Milwaukee School District is to provide equitable learning opportunities for all of our students to ensure they are prepared to live life on their own terms when they graduate. So as a district, we have developed equity non-negotiables as our belief statements that focus on building upon our learners' strengths by embedding the deeper learning competencies into every classroom. Now, this work is important, but this work is also hard. It's human work. It's important to remember that we don't have all the answers and no one is perfect. The goal of this series is not to be a monologue, but rather to have honest discussions from which we can learn. In talking across differences, ourselves and our communities have the opportunity to grow, have the opportunity to be challenged, and to understand more fully the experience of others. That's the power of conversation. While dialogue alone does not solve structural problems, it is a good place to start. So Margaret Wheatley, she's a leading leadership theorist, says it like this, we do not fear people whose stories we know. So we continue our equity journey by sharing our stories and dismissing fear. So we're really excited to be kicking off our intro to the series, um, Conversations on Equity, um, kind of talking through our why. And Deidre Raymer is joining us today to um, have this conversation with us. So let's get right into it. So you've talked a little bit about this work with many. So when you think about equity versus equality in a school setting, what does that look like? Um, I think in a school setting, it looks the same as it should everywhere else, right? The goal of the work that we're doing in our schools is really to help our learners have enough opportunities to explore their interests and their passions, what's meaningful to them, who they are as people, so that they're ready to go out and live life on their own terms. And it's different than just everybody gets the same or everybody's hitting the same outcome. The outcome you want to hit in the work is the one that means the most to you and the one that lets you go out into the world and do whatever it is is next for you in your pathway. And I think that's the big difference. A lot of trying to make the work the same tends to come from outcomes and really it's about the opportunities. So right at the start, do we have the belief in every single learner as they walk through our doors that they'll get there even if they need additional scaffolds or more time or other supports in order to achieve the goals that they're looking to do when they're ready to graduate from school. Right, so and not, not assuming sameness, right, and appreciating difference. Yeah, and just recognizing that all of our learners, we serve a beautifully diverse community. So we serve an economically diverse community, we serve a politically diverse community, we serve a racially diverse community. And so those experiences that you have in life outside of school do contribute to who you are and how you learn. And how do you recognize those and then create space in those in every classroom so that we can recognize your individuality, we can recognize the story you bring to the table and where that adds value to what you're trying to do next. And then help our learners realize that just because somebody's experience in the classroom was different than yours, that's not a right or wrong, that's just a difference. And how do we make space to hear every single voice in that classroom and show our learners that we have that belief that they've got this and they can do this and how do we support them through that work um, right from the start. The overarching goal for all the work we do in our school district is equity through deeper learning. How did we arrive at that point that that was, uh, that that was the overarching goal for all of the work that we do? Um, yeah, that's a great question. And so lots of that came from our superintendent, Dr. Marty Lexman, who had been doing work in innovation, um, school innovation for many, many years before he came to West Dallas, West Milwaukee, and is a huge champion of equitable opportunities for all learners. Um, so some of that work came from him and it came from really researching where are there schools across our nation or who is doing the work that creates outcomes that allow every student to live life on their own terms. And then what are they focusing their learning or the structure of their learning around and really paying attention to the national graduation rate from college being as low as it is in four years and what are employers looking for and the skills that students need to have 
when they leave school and they're ready to go out and do their next thing. And that drove us to the deeper learning competencies. So there are six of them. There are content mastery because school still is about learning how to do things that go beyond a Google search. Um, our kids know a lot of surface knowledge these days with their access to technology, but those deep levels of knowledge and applying that knowledge is super important in our work. But then they also need to know collaboration and communication and problem solving skills and being self-directed. Um, the most important one to us of the competencies really is the academic mindset. So that's where students feel that sense of belonging so that they wanna work hard, so they see their value and their place in that classroom, so that they're ready to go out and accomplish their goals. And there are several um, other districts in the nation that, that use the deeper learning competencies as their guide and as their framework, and the outcomes they're producing are different than the outcomes that typical traditional school produces. So that was kind of where we started with the work, and then it was really important to us as part of our strategic plan to say that's the framework. So that's the overarching work that we do as a school district, but then there are lots of things that are building-based decisions and classroom-based decisions because the school knows the community of teachers they serve, the community of learners they serve, the community of families they serve, and the classroom teacher knows the individuals walking through the door each day. So that's the overarching frame and then what that means to each school site and each classroom are things that they get to determine at those sites. So knowing that the deeper learning competency, the academic mindset is really what we're focused on, um, why is that? Yeah, um, so that's the six competencies are equally important in the work that we do. But the academic mindset is the one we've really spent a lot of time on. Um, we know that there is a rapid increase in the number of students who have mental health concerns across the nation. We know there are people, especially given this year and the, some of the, what we've been through together that are isolated from some of the things we've gone through. And we had to normalize that. Like there was a place for you, regardless of where your background has brought you today, whether you've come from a background of economic disadvantage, if you've been a household that's experienced a lot of trauma, if you're a student who's headed towards advanced placement classes and wants to go on to go to an Ivy League college, right? There's different pressures that come with that. And they all make up a huge part of who we are as people and the identity that we bring into the classroom each day. So how do we, as the educators who work with young people every day, explore our own identities so that we know what informs our practice? Why do we do the things that we do? And then make some space for children to explore that in classrooms as well, and young people to help figure out who they are. And the big part of that is it's not our job to influence that, but it's our job to make space for discovering that. And it's our job to know that about ourselves enough to know how to influence that. I am the proud mom of three children and I have two boys who have um, different learning abilities. And so they're identified as children with disabilities. And it informs a lot of how I operate every single day. And the fact that my older daughter is one of those creative minds that's taking advanced placement art classes and writing classes and all of those things, informs a lot of how I approach my work. It informs a lot around who I am every day. And that's just the children in my life. Not to mention the other things I might be interested in or passionate about in the course of that. But it also influences the decisions I make when it comes to work or when it comes to my personal life and who I associate with. And I've spent some time discovering that about myself and we have employees that have spent time discovering about themselves. We have families that do that work as their family unit. We need to make space for whatever that is that you've discovered about yourself to be accepted and to be welcomed into a classroom, knowing that your experience is different than mine. And we can, in this classroom, celebrate both and figure out how we can work together to help each other achieve a goal. Um, and that's really where we've jumped into that work around identity and diversity and justice and action. Um, it's framed a lot through the social justice standards, which frequently get misunderstood, right? That's not an effort to influence the way people think or what they do. It's a framework that says we have to build spaces where people are accepted, 
where I don't have to have the same opinion as you about something, but both opinions would be welcome to be shared if that's part of what we were doing in the content that day or in the course of the learning in that day. So where do we see evidence of instilling an academic mindset in a student and how do we know if we're successful in doing that? Um, yeah, that's the tough part of some of this work is it's harder to measure than just a test score. Um, and there's all kinds of rubrics and things like that that we use to say, are students progressing in their communication skills and their problem solving skills? And But academic mindset is really how you feel about yourself and your place in a classroom. Um, and so we measure that, we do some social emotional learning surveys twice a year that measure a student gives input as to their own set of skills around things like um, growth mindset and perseverance in the classroom. And so we measure some of it through that and lots of it is evidence informed practice. So are our learners having opportunities to go public with their work. We've had students present at conferences in the last two years, a sixth grader getting up in front of a room of 300 people and asking a national speaker a question. Like that student has an academic mindset. She knew she belonged in that space and asked a question that meant something and influenced a room full of adults to do so. Um, we have learners that are stepping out in their roles to do bigger and greater things within our community and community service work and investing in understanding what our community is all about in a way that um, we didn't always have. And so that's evidence that kids are feeling supported in the work we're doing in schools and they're willing to go out and talk about that. We've had a very purposeful intention to listen to our learners more, listen, try to listen to our families, try to get input from people through surveys and different mechanisms so that we can be sure that the work that we're doing is achieving the goals that we hope that it is. And one of those has been from learner panels. So we have panels of students come to meetings with principals and teachers and talk about what's going well for you in our schools. And they always have a ton of things to say. Many of the things they have to say that are super positive are around the relationships that our staff build with them or the relationships that they have in their own communities or in their families as a real strength. And then they always give us some things to work on um, from their lens that they would like to see be better or different. And then we use those to actually dive in and do school improvement planning. So what is the information they give us? If we're doing that really well, let's do more of that. And if that's something we need to work on, how do we build that in with the right supports around communication to the community around the why of the work or professional development for the educator or bringing in additional resources or supports to a classroom to help our learners get there? So I know you mentioned some of the less traditional measuring tools for something like having an academic mindset, but how does that play into some of the more traditional markers that we're looking for? Uh, yeah, I mean, in schools, we get judged by test scores and right. things like that. And our kids are more than a test score, and we want them to know that every day of the week. But test scores open opportunities to go on to post-secondary education, and test scores open opportunities for scholarships, and test scores are how we're publicly judged in the area for what we do. So. Mm -hmm. If the work that you're doing isn't contributing to all those pieces that provide opportunity for kids, then you have to reevaluate you know, what you are doing. And so we've seen in our time in the last six years, we've been really focused on the deeper learning work for the last five. Um, but in the last six years, we went from three failing schools and one in the exceeds category to eight in the exceeds category and zero in the failing category on those school report cards. We have our highest ACT scores in five years. And that wasn't because we suddenly did a bunch of ACT prep work. It was because we started focusing on how do we get kids inspired and passionate about what they're doing in school so that they want to learn what an area, you know, the formula for area is used for. Right, because they can see themselves using those pieces of information in the future. Correct. Yeah. And then we had opportunities to weave in passion projects. Kids mm. learn things all the time and they're outside of school with their families, with their greater community. And how does that tie into what we're doing at school? Um, we have a group of young people right now that are learning a lot around baking and baking bread and doing all of these pieces. Now, are they learning how to work together? Yes. Are they learning how to problem solve? Absolutely. But are they also doing reading, writing, math in the course of that activity? 
Yes. And so it's contributing to more of the learner understanding the why and where it means something to them, but it's creating higher test scores and all of those things as you would expect that work would and a closing of some of those achievement gaps that are traditionally seen across the nation. We're seeing some movement in that area that's really promising. I want to thank you for coming and talking with us for a little bit and uh, letting us know how uh, we can be a champion of equity through our deeper learning work. I appreciate that, Alex. Thanks for the opportunity to do this. And I think uh, sharing with our community our why and why this work is so important to mm -hmm. us and the opportunities it's going to provide to our learners to go out and live life on their own terms is something I'll always take the chance to get to come and talk about. Thanks. Mm -hmm.